Okay, so let's take a look at this problem. An oceanographer claims that the mean dive depth of a North Atlantic right whale is 115 meters. A random sample of 34 dive depths has a mean of 121.2 meters and a standard deviation of 24.2 meters. Is there enough evidence to reject the claim at alpha equal 0.1? Okay, so if this were um, on a test and all mixed up, you would want to first identify the parameter. So here's the clue, right? It's a claim about a mean, so my parameter is mu. So my options for tests are either the z-test or the t-test. So reading this problem, I'm not told to assume the population standard deviation is any particular value. Instead, I'm given the sample standard deviation. So this is going to be a t-test. Okay, sound good? Okay, so I'm going to write first the claim as a mathematical statement. Okay, so that's going to be um, mu is um, equal to 115. Okay, so this is the claim. So will this be the null or the alternative? It's going to be the null. So this forces the alternative to be not equal to 115. Okay, so this is a two-tailed test. Okay, so first I want to calculate the standardized test statistic. Okay, so that's x bar minus the claimed parameter over s over the square root of n. Okay, so reading the problem for um, n is equal to 34, we had a mean of 121.2 and a standard deviation of 24.2. So to do this by hand, I would just plug and chug. Okay, I've got um, 121.2 minus 115 over 24.2 over the square root of 34. Okay, so again, we're looking at the difference here in the numerator. Okay, there, um, we did get a sample value that was not equal to 115, but what we want to know is, is this difference statistically significant? Okay, so putting this in the calculator, okay, move that over a little bit. Okay, I'm going to put parentheses in the, in the numerator and parentheses in the denominator because this thing can't read my mind like so. Okay, do you get a value of 1.494-ish? Yes. Okay, so it's about 1.494. Okay. So now we want to find the critical values. There's going to be two because this is a two-tailed test. Okay, so critical values. I need my level of significance, and what is that for this problem? Point 0.1, point 0.10. Okay, so I'm going to draw something bell-shaped. Put zero in the middle and shade my two areas of rejection. Now because it's a two-tailed test, I need to divide alpha in two. So how much area is in one tail by itself? 0.05, right? So 0.05 in each tail, like so. Okay, so um, I'll have two T values here that are the critical values, but they're going to be opposite in sign. So to use the table, I need the degrees of freedom. If n was 34, then the degrees of freedom will be 33. Okay, so looking at my T distribution, I want to uh, first read down to 33, okay? And then I want to read over 
to the column that has 0.05 area in one tail or 0.1 between two tails. Okay. So how about this one right here? See 0.05 in one tail and then together 0.1 for the two tails. Okay, so I'm going to read over and then down. Okay, do you get 1.692? Okay, so the table only gives the positive one. So I have 1.692. And then um, I also have a negative critical value by symmetry. It's negative 1.692. When we get to hypothesis test about a standard deviation or variance, we're going to go back to that chi-square table and um, we'll have to find two critical values because they will not be symmetric. Okay. Okay, so at this point in time, what will be our decision? Where does our test statistic lie with respect to the critical values? It lies in between, right? My test statistic is in the fail to reject region. Okay, you see that? 1.49 is less than 1.692. Okay. So the decision right now will be to fail to reject the claim, and that will be the decision when we're done, too. <laughs> okay, so if I'm failing to reject the null, am I supporting the claim in this problem? Yes, because we're keeping the null, and in this case the null is the claim. There is enough evidence to support, what is this, an oceanographer? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> forgot what this was about. There is enough evidence to support the oceanographer's claim that the mean dive depth of a North Atlantic right whale is 115 meters. Okay. Maybe not for the left whale. <laughs> so it's North Atlantic right whale. But it's not capitalized, so I don't know what that means. But that's okay. I teach math. Right? <laughs> okay, so um, the decision is to fail to reject the null, and we're supporting the oceanographer's claim. Now, let's go over, if you have a newer TI, where'd my calculator go? We can get this critical value by using the inverse T. Now, not all of you will have a newer calculator, but just in case you do, this is what you'd want to do, okay? So to get the critical value using the TI-84, very similar to that process I went over to get the critical value using the calculator for the Z distribution, it's expecting a cumulative area as its input. So I can do this two ways. I could find the lower one. First, okay, so by using um, inverse T, it's in your distribution menu in the calculator of 0.05, okay, or I can also use my inverse T and find the upper one, but if you find one, you have them both because of symmetry. Okay, so for this one, using the upper one, I need a cumulative area. I don't want to put in 0.05. What would be my cumulative area? 0.95. Okay. Okay, so um, if you have a newer TI, you okay, go to distribution and see here, well, it's capitalized with a T. Inverse T? Okay, some of you may have it, some of you may not. If you don't have it, you can also use StatCrunch, the calculator, the T calculator in StatCrunch, okay? Or you can just use the table like I did. Okay, so it's expecting a cumulative area. So I can put in 0.05, and then it needs the degrees of freedom, okay, and then paste. Okay, so is that approximately what we got using the table? For that negative critical value? Yeah. 
Okay, if I wanted to find the upper critical value, I could put an area of 0.95 and it should give the positive value. Okay, or you could just find one and just remember this is symmetric. Okay, so um, we need to find the p-value. Now we're not going to use the table to do this. Okay, so the p-value is the probability of getting a test statistic at least as extreme as the one obtained by the sample. Okay, so I'm going to get this in the calculator. Okay, so using the t-test in the TI 84 or 83. Okay, so um, I'm going to go to stat, bright arrow over to tests. Okay, the Z test is for section 72. We want the T test, test for the mean when sigma is unknown. Okay, I could either have the raw data in a list, all 34 values but I have the summary statistics so I'm going to leave that highlighted and I'm going to put in the parameter from the null which is 115 okay my sample mean in this problem was 121.2 sample standard deviation is 24.2 and my sample size was 34 and then I can overwrite the direction of the alternative okay this was a two-tailed test and then calculate. Okay, so is this test statistic of 1.493 and so on the same that we got by hand? Yes. Okay, so you could um, use the t-test to do this in the calculator. That's fine. Now, because this is a two-tailed test, the calculator will double the p-value for you. So the output gives the correct p-value. Okay, when you put in the right alternative, it doubles it. Okay, again, the um, table is limited. We'd only be able to get a range of values for the p-value. So always use technology to find the p-value. Okay. Okay, so the p-value in this case is 0.1447. Um, okay, so let's compare the p-value. Oops. Okay. Let's compare the p-value to alpha. Okay, so my p-value is 0.1447, alpha was 0.1. Okay, is this p-value less than or equal to alpha, or is it greater than? It's greater than. So in this case, we fail to reject the null. Okay, so if we look back, at our critical value in our test statistic, that should make sense, okay? The p-value corresponds to the area from your test statistic, okay, in this way, and then we would double it for a two-tailed test. So clearly that area is greater than half of alpha, which would be greater than double alpha, okay? We saw that we would fail to reject here, when we compare the p-value to our level of significance, we know that we're going to fail to reject the null. Okay? Okay, so um, we would say there is sufficient evidence. I can't write very fast. To support the oceanographers I don't know if that's spelled right. <laughs> Claim that the mean, what is this? Dive depth, sorry, is equal to 115 meters, okay, for the North Atlantic right whale. Okay, not to be confused with the North Atlantic left whale. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> okay, so um, what type of error may have occurred? A type 2 error. Okay, so since 
the decision is to fail to reject the null, a type 2 error may have occurred. In other words, we could have failed to reject the null when the null is really false. Okay, but again, that's not an intentional error, and it doesn't mean that it absolutely did occur. Okay, we set alpha so that it's not likely to have occurred. Okay. Okay, last but not least, let's look at the um, corresponding confidence interval. Since alpha was equal to 0.1, we would be finding a 90% confidence interval. Okay, so again, I'm going to use my T interval in the calculator. Okay, so I'm going to press on STAT, right arrow over to TEST, and then scroll down to T interval. Okay, and um, it's really nice. It kept the information from the hypothesis test, but I want to change my level of significance to 0.9. Okay, so if alpha is 0.1, the confidence interval is 0.9. If alpha is 0.05, the confidence interval is 0.95. Okay, so our confidence interval goes from 114.18 up to 128.22. Now, did this confidence interval, does it contain 115? Yes, it contains the um, equality from the null, which supported the oceanographer's claim. But this also gives me a sense of direction here. Okay, it looks like, on average, they might also be um, diving a little bit deeper than that, okay, because some of this confidence interval is above 115. Okay, so as a researcher, this would be give you more information rather than just equals versus not equals. Okay? Does that sound good?